Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. Today's video, I'm going to just show you a couple of things that I've been working on. One of them you would have seen if you had even looked to see that I posted a video. I have been using a new thumbnail maker to try to make my thumbnails, I don't know, maybe somewhat better instead of just doing a screenshot for my actual video. The second thing is this. Found a way to do that too, so that I can ask you to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have to come up with another thing for liking and commenting and all that shit, but you should be doing that anyways. Okay, so again, with the moving forward and up, I'm just trying to add some stuff, add some elements to the video to make them a little bit more engaging. I gotta work on the titles and stuff when I add words to the video. One of the things that I am also doing today is that I am not going to touch this freaking table. I did not realize how much I slapped this table around and or things that are on it and it is unbelievably annoying. And if it's annoying to me, it's got to drive you crazy. I mean, annoying enough that someone would be like, I can't watch this guy. Stop touching the damn table. So I'm actually going to sit on my hands for now which is gonna to be tough because, you know, I'm very animated. So while I was perusing Twitter today, I saw Terry Warfield post something that hits home with me. The gist of what he's saying is stop cutting out your mistakes because we all make mistakes. We all have those where we fumble a word, you know, where we make a noise or something like that. And you keep cutting it out and it's not, it's basically not true to form. It's not reality because when you talk, you stumble. Sometimes you pause. It, it lets people see the reality of it, and, and that's don't cut out all that shit. You know that I cut a lot of stuff out. I've told you that I can take two hours worth of footage and cut it down to 10 minutes. Okay, that's just because some of the footage, you don't, you know, like I go on a rant and you don't need to hear it, things like that. But I do cut out throat clearing, which I do a lot. I'm incredibly annoying that way. I admit that. I'm a very flummy person, and I also cut out long pauses. I will continue to cut those long pauses. You don't need to sit there and watch me have a dumb dog stare for 10 seconds while I'm trying to remember a word, so that's going to get cut out. I have to cut words like and out a lot to the point where I've told you before that I start to recognize the audio peak on the footage in Final Cut that I'm like, oh god, there's another one, and i got to cut that out. And it does make things very jarring to the point that I know that some of my earlier videos were, they're unwatchable. There's the ones that I told you before that I, I like, I can't even watch them. I want to take them down. They're so awful. But I like to see the progress that I've made and my editing isn't as shitty as it used to be. I, I hope, I think. You'll let me know, I'm sure. I have been presented with an opportunity. An opportunity that has not become like solid, it, it's happening, but there's a pretty good chance it's going to happen. And, and that is actually shooting stills, not video, or, or at least not, maybe not video. There might be some video, I don't know. If it's video, great, I'm all set. I mean, I've got, you know, the Cinerig set up and I got my run and gun set up that's perfect, I, you know, I know how to use it, I can do whatever I need to do as far as video goes. What I am not set up for in this specific instance is still pictures. Yes, I have said that my A6600 is perfect for me for shooting stills with, with what I have, meaning the lenses that I have and the camera and whatever, and I know how to use the camera and I'm good to go. I have the three sisters, the Sigma three sisters, 16 f 1.4, 31 1.4, 56 1.4, plus I have my Sony 18 to 105 f4 and the 10 to 18 f4. And I also have the kit lens, which is 16 to 50 variable, 3.5 to 5.6. All those lenses are great for me, for what I do, like this channel and doing walkabouts and taking pictures that I might post online somewhere or more than likely not post anywhere and just look at longingly on my computer. However, for this particular opportunity, it's not gonna cut it. I'm not knocking the A6600, I'm not knocking APS-C, 
or anything like that, you know that because you know how much I love these A6600s, but the reality is, is that what I'm going to be shooting, I'm going to need to have full frame, high megapixel camera for what they're going to use these pictures for. What does that mean? It means I need to get a Sony A7R4. I might be able to get away with an R3. The difference between the R3 and the R4, yes, megapixels, and people say, oh, the file size is too big with the R4, and, you know, unless you have a specific need for it, which I just might. The bigger thing is that it's just more updated. It has a better screen, a better viewfinder, it has better autofocus, you know, just, it's just better in general. Now, at the time the R4 was released, it was at least a thousand dollars more expensive than the R3. That is not the case any longer. As it stands right now, I'm pretty much set on getting the Sony a7R4. That being said, I also need to think about lenses. This is sort of cart before the horse, and I'm, you know, my mind is going in a dozen different directions thinking about this, that, and the other thing. And when it gets right down to it, and you watch a thousand videos on, on should I get this camera? Should I get that camera? And everyone will come down and say, well, the R4 is very specific. And if you need the extra megapixels, then everything else with it, like the better screen, the better viewfinder, blah, 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 all that kind of shit, that's all gravy. But if you need the extra megapixels, then yeah, you should spring the extra money to get that. Now, this isn't just me, you know, randomly walking around and shooting pictures of somebody at the boardwalk or, or you know, a flower outside of three ships or something like that. This is an actual paying gig that, you know, in theory could end up over time paying for this acquisition. Cart before the horse. I'm just putting this out there that that's kind of where I'm going. And I'm not, and I'm not going back on what I said. The A6600s are fantastic cameras. I love them. I will continue to use them. But for what is coming up, and I can't tell you about it, so don't bother asking. But what's coming up, I would need something. I would need at least the R3 or an R4. And I'm sticking with Sony because I dig Sony. And I know how to use it and blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of where I'm going. I realized I took my hands out from underneath my legs. I hope I haven't hit the table too much. Okay, that's pretty much it. I just sort of wanted to show you how I added, you know, the the subscribe thingy and talk about my thumbnails and all that kind of stuff, uh, and then just let you in on the on the possible opportunity that's coming and why I'm looking at those cameras and and what I'm thinking about doing. So that's where we are. All right, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. Just kind of sharing with y'all. Uh, let me know what you think of, of, you know, my thumbnails over the past few days and, and, you know, about adding the subscribe. Other than that, that's all I've got for you today. As always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.